Hello and welcome to Digital Anthropos. Today's topic is digital transformation. It is a topic that's kind of hot today because everybody wants to go digital. A lot of the older companies that have a lot of other tools, older tools, want to optimize their flows because the market is pushing them towards new skills, new ideas, and also the new generations don't want to go in an office to do something or in an agency and they prefer doing everything on the phone. So today I'm going to talk about digital transformation from my experience working with all these big companies that have older or newer systems but still they need a lot of improvement in order to get into the digital age. So let's start with what is digital transformation. Wikipedia tells us that it's the use of new, fast and frequently changing digital technology to solve problems. That means that we are living in a speed world where, where we want to evolve the, the, the way we, we work. So in this whole speed, we want to add even more speeds. So we don't want to go, let's say, in a banking agency to create an account, we'd like to create an account from our phone. We don't want to have physical cards anymore, we want to have everything on the phone. Or we just uh, prefer having less human interaction. So these are the new fast and frequently changing digital technologies that are helping us to, to solve our problems. The thing that everybody forgets when talking about digital transformation is that you don't just transform how everything works inside without a very important part, meaning the way you work in the in inside of the organization to deliver that part of the digital product. And typically many or most of the, agile trans of the digital transformations I worked with have had this part of the agile transformation. So that means transforming the current way of working towards agile frameworks or methods. This is my definition. And they are very well linked, very well uh, bonded. So we'll discuss why this happens. While we talk about the digital transformation, what we want to do is to implement digital technologies like mobile apps, e-security or biometrics or things like that. We want to have uh, bitcoins or electronic coins, other tools that are new and fancy and bring us a lot of new advantages but also some other disadvantages. Or some other companies want to simplify the user flows by automating them. So you don't want to go to a banking agency to create an account. You want to create this automatically from your laptop or from your phone. You don't want to have cards, as I mentioned previously. You don't want to go to an office to or to somewhere to buy a new SIM for your phone. You'd like to do that uh, automatically from your laptop or from a phone or something like that. So a user flow is a bit more than just thinking about what the user is doing in this moment. It's also about thinking how the new generation of users wants to work. And there are very big differences if we talk about user experience because the millennials and then the generations that follow after that started already behaving in a different way and they want everything to be extremely well simplified very clear and very obvious while the previous generations didn't want that necessarily though probably they would have liked that as well but now with the new generations you cannot just give any flow and you need to let them understand let the people understand how to use them immediately without any manual or guidance or video on how to use a certain system. 
we say in user experience in UX that if you have if you have the need of a manual then already your user experience flow is is not good it it's flawed another thing that people go into digital transformation for is paperless technologies e uh, invoices um, don't don't use uh, paper in any way so everything is is paperless you don't have receipts anymore either electronic receipts and so on so this is also a benefit for the environment but it's also of course a benefit for the organization because it reduces the costs with the paper itself but also with the with supplying the paper with the operations around putting it to work with printers and so on so it reduces all these or all, all these costs that we have another reason why we do digital transformation is to minimize human interaction believe it or not but humans would prefer to have interactions with other humans just where it's meaningful so if we can have less meaningful uh, less meaningless interaction and more meaningful interaction that would be a good idea so you don't want to go into an office and do something that you could do uh, ideally on the phone or from your laptop or from the internet or from a booth there in that specific agency but just don't get involved with people typically that means you're faster you don't stay in lines you don't wait for whatever the the other person wants uh, you to do so it's a lot easier for for the users for the clients to have this minimal human interaction but it gets also more you know, less expensive for the business so you see that there are benefits here overall sometimes quite often especially with banks or with insurances or with other, other types of these big companies is that they want to decrease costs by mi minimizing agency visits so each visit in your in the office of the bank will be costly so the bank would like to minimize that interaction and so more and more you can do things you your own so you can do your self service you can do your self maintenance like for example um, don't go to the office to to get your id to check the new data you can put your new data in an app or make a photo of the your new id and then something happens magically and you will have your new data from from your new id in the banking system and you do whatever you do in the bank create an account or create a credit or whatever another thing that um, typically people want to do with digital transformation is optimizing client time meaning that you'd like to your clients to use as less time as possible in the agency but also with the app with the website that you provide as a digital means of communication and of solving the clients problems so it's not enough that you just have a flow where let's say users can create their own accounts but you also want to have these flows to be nice and easy to use so that they optimize their time they're not blockages they're not defects they're very easy and very understand very easy to understand to and to use and then you focus on user flows for clients but also for employees because quite often this happens that employees are like the black sheep of the organization where nothing happens so you still have those very old antiquated tools that are extremely difficult to use or you have 12 tools to make a credit let's say because you have all these bits and uh, parts from the system where you need to enter certain data and then of course also the life has of this um, 
officer from the bank will be extremely difficult, but also it will be extremely costly for the organization itself. So optimizing for user experience, for user flows, for your employees is extremely important from many points of view. Now this is about digital transformation. Let's talk about what agile transformation is. So what is the other side of the digital transformation? Here we want to optimize time to market the better tools and techniques. So it's about trying to come up with uh, modern tools like continuous deployment, continuous integration, DevOps, automated testing, so that by itself you can, can serve the other part of the digital transformation. So it's very important to have this user experience flow to simplify the flows, but if you cannot deliver very often to your user, then they will think you forgot about them. So you need to constantly improve their experience and this is why you need a good time to market. So you need a good cadence of delivery on the market. And this is, this is where tools and practices come. Uh, and this is a very important part of the agile transformation side of the whole digital transformation. You have then continuous improvement mindset. So it's never the perfect process, the perfect framework, the perfect way of working. You need to continuously adapt and understand what, what can go better than now, especially because quite often we work in complex systems and parts of that system will change. So, okay, even if let's say the system will be simple and the not much will change, we still probably have a lot of, of things to improve until things will be, let's say, almost perfect. But this never happens because the system changes a lot. So you constantly will need to adapt to the market that changes to maybe other parts of the big organization that will make transformation. So it's, it's never a good idea to start to say, okay, we made this change and now we're perfect. No, we have nothing more to do. Then what you need to do is me measure this progress because quite often you need to have these measurements to show you if you're going on the good path. It's not enough just to have uh, a goal and set it, but you don't really know if you are there or where you are on the road. It's important to have these metrics. Then you need to focus on the product and on the client. This is very important also from the user experience side, but the product is key. So you move from with Agile transformation, you move from the idea that you have the project and the project manager who has deadlines and towards this mindset where you have a product with clients, you need to understand the clients. So the team needs to start understanding the clients and to work on this product, continuously improve the product for the clients. And that means deadlines aren't that important anymore but the value that you bring to your client is a lot more important this doesn't matter we don't that you, we don't have deadlines especially in some areas that are regulatory you will have deadlines and you need to respect them but in some other areas where you'd have these uh, delivery deadlines from the project managers i think it's a lot more important to focus on the value that you deliver rather than having fixed deadlines just because some project manager put them there. There are other reasons to have deadlines and this won't change in Agile or in anything else, any, any other way of working is when you need to uh, collaborate uh, with other departments to make a joint deployment. So of course you will still have deadlines, but I think less of them and only those that are important for delivering value to your clients. 
With Agile transformation, you want to go towards an adaptive way of working to experiment and learn. Experiment is very important here because quite often I see that it's very difficult for teams to adapt to this idea that you don't just transform now and then you're perfect and you stay like that, you set everything in stone. You need to have this mindset of trying to experiment and learn from those experiments. The hard part is that some of these experiments will be failures and it's very difficult if you're not used to that to take into account that some of your ideas are bad and they will fail and it's just a shift of mindset. Now it's very nice for me when I make an experiment and I make an hypothesis that this might work and then I understand it doesn't work so it, I learned something that's very important. I learned faster and easier that this idea is not good and then I stop using it rather than start using it, use it, use it, use it and after a longer period of time you will find out that it's a bad idea and stop using it. So this is why experimentation is very important in an adaptive way of working and learning, learning from your current methods, understanding from the feedback of the market, from the feedback of your clients, what is good now for you to keep and what is good uh, now for you to change. We also use new technologies typically when we perform an agile transformation. Uh, especially in big organizations, the technologies that exist there tend to be kind of old and I'm not talking necessarily about things like programming languages, though those are old sometimes, but I'm also talking about tools and sometimes even programming languages like introducing um, tools for mobile. This isn't something very usual in those big organizations and they need to start addressing this situation. The same for continuous integration, continuous deployment. These are fairly new things in some of these worlds though we've had them in uh, with extreme programming uh, at least for 15 to 20 years in software development shops but now there's they start to exist to in some uh, organizations that are not that agile or weren't that agile until now. A very important thing that you address when we, you focus on this idea of agile transformation is teamwork over individual work. So you want to be able to work first of all in a team to help the team in the beginning and only after that focus on your individual work because sometimes it is important what you do but, but most often because you want to focus on time to market it's very important what the team is doing. So you cannot always do exactly what you like but you need to do things that are let's say less interesting for you personally now but are for the common good. And this common view of thing, seeing things is probably the most difficult for new teams with Agile. And with this idea of looking at the client and, and trying to make the best out of your work into something that works for the client. This happens because typically teams have been too far away from the real client, from the real user. So they're not used to that. This is why it takes time. So you need to be, have a bit of patience when, when working with teams in, in so, such environments. But now if we're working in a team, we also want to have a sustainable development. So even though we removed part of our deadlines, we still have uh, push from different management uh, teams or for from different areas from our colleagues from other departments 
to develop, to evolve, to deliver. So it's very important to have this sustainable pace. Sustainable pace means that you can work for a period of time, but without sacrificing your health, your free time, your leisure time, your family time, your learning time. So it's very important to have enough work that you just won't stay uh, and, and do nothing useful, but also on the other side, don't have too much work continuously because you'll just get very tired and then you won't be efficient anymore. So that's what sustainable development is. Ideally, it's just like a continuous line of con parallel to the uh, time axis, let's say, in a graph and it won't vary that much. This is ideal, but in real life you do have some moments when you'll work a bit more, a bit less, but those moments don't need to be extremely different, like this week I don't have anything to do and then next week I'll work uh, 18 hours per day all the weekends because we need to finish something. So this is a waste, this is something that turns people away from that organization, it, it's a way of working that I don't think will function that much in the near future with the new generation of people that really care a lot more about their own health and about what they want to do and they don't want to sacrifice that much for the company as the previous generations have done. So it's very important to take into account sustainable development when we talk about agile transformation. And the last point is having self-organizing teams. That means that you have teams that will be able to understand what they need to do in order to achieve the goal that was given to them from anyone in, the man in management, product or whatever areas you have. These uh, people won't need to be micromanaged to do something, but they will know how to do that. You don't achieve self-organization immediately. You need to pass through some phases where you delegate more and more to that team so that the team can adjust to this way of working and slowly become independent and start being empowered to do what, what they need to do. So these are the two different aspects of digital and agile transformation and I think they go very well together. Agile transformation can work without the digital uh, change because maybe you do have digital things in place but you don't have such a, an efficient process or an efficient way of working or an efficient framework in your organization. But when you do digital transformation, most often you need to do also this side of how you work and how you adapt to a new mindset, how you change your views from working in a team for a specific uh, isolated part, working on a flow and understanding that you work for clients. Business agility refers to the ability of a business system to rapidly respond to change by adapting its initial stable configuration. That's the definition of business agility from Wikipedia. And I do believe that it's not enough just to talk about agile transformation, but I, we do need to talk about business agility. If we have businesses that can adapt to the market, to the shifts of the market, how your competition changes, how the, the jobs market change um, and all sorts of things like that, then you are respecting the ideas of business agility. For a big organization it's difficult to have that. The bigger the organization, the more difficult it is. And this is a current challenge for uh, big uh, existing organizations to overcome 
because for small organizations that start coming into the market now, it's very easy to have business agility. They don't have a background, they don't have a legacy, they don't have systems, they don't have so many rules sometimes, so that they can be extremely fast. While existing organizations have this legacy, they also have a lot of clients that were treated in a certain uh, certain way and they would expect you to treat them in the same way but on the other hand all these exceptions become difficult to manage when you want to move very fast with fast changes because all of these exceptions have a cost so it's very important to achieve business agility if you really want your digital transformation to last I think those two things will need to go together if you want to have uh, an efficient company, an efficient organization on the long run. What is business agility making? Basically, if we go back to Kinefin framework, uh, Kinefin framework is a framework that talks about uh, complexity and how to manage complexity in, in bigger or smaller systems. We transform chaos to a complex system. Chaos means that you don't have any rules, everything will happen as it happens. While complex systems will be those systems that have a certain dynamic where you have a lot of changing moving parts. So you might have teams that work in a chaotic way, meaning that everybody is doing whatever they want. And if you start putting in place um, a system, um, a way of working, then you start getting into the complex environment. Well, when you have a complex environment, it might be unnecessarily complex because you you added some parts of bureaucracy or of collaboration, of paperwork that aren't necessary anymore. And in order to be able to achieve business agility, you'd need to simplify this complexity, this unnecessary complexity, towards a complicated space. So a complicated space is where you have just the natural complexity of the system and you don't have all this uh, accidental, unnecessary uh, complication. So, in a word, you just simplify bureaucracy. You simplify that people have more time to work, they have less uh, frictions, they have less, less anchors so that they can work easily towards the goal that you have to transform digitally orga your organization. Another thing that you want to do is try to split into smaller deliverables because typically a big organization moves slowly so they deliver maybe every six weeks, maybe every nine weeks, maybe every year, it depends. So little by little you'd like to be able to deliver in smaller deliverables that are maybe one week, maybe two weeks, maybe six weeks, but it depends where you're starting from. If you start from one year and you go to six months, that's great. If you go to six months and go to six weeks, that's great. So try to split your deliverables and have a smaller and smaller time to market. And this time to market will help you understand better your user. And understanding better your user it means that you satisfy them better and it's a lot more obvious that they will remain your client and they will have a better experience. So this is the whole pur purpose of the digital transformation to simplify your user's job. What are other aspects of business agility and how you can start to figure this thing out? First of all, a thing that almost none of our clients is doing is to clarify and align on goals. It is apparently extremely difficult for big organizations to have transformation goals and even more difficult to align on them. So even after 
sometimes after a few years, they, they start understanding what their, their goals are, they need to start aligning the internal part of the organization on that, those goals. And everything in this area is very difficult. It's very long and for me personally, it takes a lot much longer just because of the, how these old systems work. The second part, the second thing to take into account when talking about business agility is to change organizational structure to focus on the goal. So if you just keep the organization as it is, it will be extremely difficult to achieve the goal to uh, have, let's say, better time to market for a certain product. And these changes won't be very easy to make. The bigger the organization, the more difficult it is. So sometimes you just need to create parallel organizations that have a focus on value streams and leave the rest of the organization as they are. And little by little transform this um, older part of the organization from silos to value streams. Why do we talk so much about value streams? Because you want to create these business value streams in order to be able to to achieve good time to market. If you, let's say you have seven departments and every request needs to pass through those seven departments, it is extremely difficult to manage the priorities of those seven departments, especially when they have a lot of work to do. And it's also very difficult to know what's their workload if you don't measure it or even sometimes when you measure it. So something that's a lot more efficient for the user, for the end goal is that you create the value streams where you start having bits and pieces from all these seven departments and you create these cross-functional teams where you put people from the in these departments. Now the downside of this is that you maybe will start, start losing the specialization that the teams had in their initial departments. So it's a, it's a problem of trying to focus on what's more important. Probably in some areas of the business, it's a lot better to have business value streams, but in other parts of the business, it doesn't make sense. So it's better to, to have those silos as they are. So don't change the whole organization just because you want to have a model, change only when it, where it makes sense for you and for your organization. A very, very, very important thing, very important thing is to have continuous improvements. So continuous improvement is a mindset and you want to instill this mindset in everybody who starts working in this way on the value stream because they need to start understanding what are their impediments and they need to be empowered to remove these impediments for delivery. Without doing that, you will just have, instead of seven departments, you will have a value stream doing the same work with the same anchors as before, and they will just be called something like a digital team or an agile team or a squad or something, but in the rest will remain the same. So unless you have this ability, this power given to you by the top management to change things in the organization that hinder you from achieving faster time to market, then all this change doesn't make any sense. It will be just frustrating for people who have, uh, who were given this promise that it will be a lot better. And then after a while, they will see that it's just the same thing, but they are just in a different team structure and that's all. And that's not the purpose. That's why <clears throat> when you have this goal of business agility, you need to understand the complexity of overall implementation of business agility. And it's important to take care into account that transformations, sometimes huge transformations for that organization will happen and they will need to happen. 
Towards the end now, let's talk about some concerns I see. These are observations that I have by working with many clients. And first and the most important that I talked briefly about is that not many organizations start from having goals, but just targets for, let's say, I want to transform to digital because it's the new trend, or I want a bit of agile, or I want to implement uh, Scrum or Kanban or Safe or and so on. This isn't a goal. This is like, uh, I want to buy a new car. Why do you want to buy a new car? I don't know. It's new. It's just a new thing. So if you want to buy a new car because the old one is bad and it keeps breaking up, okay, that's a good goal. But if you need to understand what is your goal because starting from that goal, it depends what car you will buy and what what will be in it. And for organizations, it's very difficult to have these goals. It takes even years sometimes. And if you want to talk about business agility, that's just huge. It, it's impossible to be agile on the market, to have this agility in the market when you're this slow with de taking decisions. Then another concern is that the transformation is bigger than people imagine. You need to transform more uh, parts from the organization like departments, break departments. Some managers want to have their job, but another job that will be changed. Uh, some managers won't exist anymore. Uh, you will have teams that shift their focus. You'll have new roles like maybe agile coaches or scrum masters or DevOps people or all sorts of these roles that didn't exist until now. So typically organizations don't imagine how big the change will be. And even though quite often you explain them, you explain to the top management over and over, they, they don't believe that it's that big. And it's a very important thing to take into account. Uh, then just a few organizations take into account business agility when doing digital transformation. So then the results are unsatisfactory and fragile because you won't be able to stay on the same pace where you started. Let's say you start building the new shiny product in a digital world, you start having your nice clients that are happy, but then because you didn't take care to constantly keep a good quality of your software, of your product, things will start being more and more difficult. So you'll, you'll get from a good time to market to a less and less time to market, and then you'll need to take six months to repair it. And that means a very bad to time to market. So this is the fragile part of digital transformation when you don't take into account the part of business agility. It's the same with not taking into account business. So not having the business approach and the business people inside this whole organization that starts delivering in a, in a digital way. Another concern is that usually management is not ready to leave the control of the teams. They still want to micromanage, they still want to do the thing that they always did to be in control and to brag that I have 160 people under my control now. And if they don't want to do that, it's quite impossible to do self-organization. It's quite impossible to let the specialists do what they need to do and what they know needs to be done. This is a common anchor in big organizations when things change and it's probably one of the worst and one of the most difficult things to tackle in any big organization. And probably the last but the most important concern is that digital transformation will happen, will happen in the world 
and the organizations will fail, will probably go bankrupt. So, it, you know, it's no problem. Some organizations will fail, won't be able to reach a, um, the market, the electronic market, the digital market that starts being more and more uh, present, but they will probably go, go bankrupt. And that's normal. I think it's an economical cycle, but it's a concern. It's a real concern for those organizations. And all the things that we talked about now, all the concerns reflect into this problem that we'll probably have in the near future. Six advices for you when you, you want to start your digital transformation. First of all, start from the user's needs. Understand the user. Don't, miss, don't be smug that you know the user because maybe you used to know the user, but now the user is younger, has more needs, different needs than the user you used to know. Generations change and their needs change as well. We are educated in a different way and the education with this digital world changes very fast. So don't be smug that you know from the beginning what the user needs. That's very important. Two, transform slowly the organization to be able to deliver value to the user. I put here emphasis on slowly. If you make a big bang change to your organization, then probably it will fail or partially fail because in a complex world it's very difficult to know what every type of client needs without having this feedback loop to understand the user, understand the client, understand, understand and then adapt your way of working so that you can deliver value to that client, to that those users as fast as possible. So that's why if you transform the organization very fast, probably you'll just put into place something that's trendy now on the market, some safe or something like that. But in the end, you will improve a bit, but not that much as you could have. If you, if you, you would have just looked at what's possible out there and starting to, to create a framework, a way of working from bottom to top. Three, include both digital and business agility in the plan. I think it's clear why we talked about that, uh, so I won't go more into detail. Four, don't forget about the people involved. This is very problematic. Quite often <clears throat> we forget about the people, the management from these big organizations just talk about the, fr the, the process, the, the changes, uh, what they need to do in order to achieve these very abstract goals. But nobody asks the people, what do you think? What's your view on that? And they should have a big say in this change because they work there, they know the limits of their current way of working, they know what's good in their current way of working. So it's very important to keep what's good and improve what can be improved. No matter if it's Agile or Scrum or Kanban or whatever, that's not the important part here. The important part is that they will feel that this change is for them. You want to do this change for them, also for your client, for your user and for the management. So it should be a win-win-win situation if you do it right. Five. Find external consultants that have done this before. We do have some clients that came to us and said, we'd like to do this and we explained how we work. They didn't like it because it was too much focus on the people, I guess, or they were, they thought that it looks too complicated or they thought they can do it themselves. And after two years, three years, they came back and they were, they said it didn't work. They worked with junior 
consultants or junior trainers that weren't that experienced and they failed. So what that means is that they lost two, three years of their time and that can be a lot in a in a market that that changes very fast it can even mean going into bankruptcy for some organizations so try to find the external consultants that have done this before and they can guide you very well on the long term i tell you it will be a lot cheaper than going on the fast and cheap way even though on the short term it will seem extremely expensive and the six uh, number six on my list is it's a lot more difficult than you think always the transformation is not that easy as you think you will need to look at areas that you never thought about you'll need to do some changes that might seem weird or silly and quite often even for these experienced consultants is the first time to do something like that because guess what everybody has their special cases and special scenarios where you need to take this into account so thank you for watching and you can find some details and the slides that i used in the description below and until next time, don't forget to be digital, but also human.